Hi, in today's lecture, we are going to study proof of correctness. This proof of correctness is uh, to prove that the Grady algorithm that we have come up with is correct and it gives the optimal solution of the problem. So um, we'll see uh, what are the conditions that a Grady, Grady algorithm has to satisfy to be correct. So uh, there are many ways to uh, prove the correctness of an algorithm um, so one is proof by induction which I'm sure you are familiar with already uh, it is a mathematical proof actually the second one is exchange argument so in exchange argument you uh, basically give arguments uh, in favor of your solution so uh, um, proof by contradiction is uh, the most famous exchange argument and uh, then the third option is to uh, maybe use a mixture of the above two techniques you can uh, do some portion of the proof by induction and some portion uh, by exchange arguments so there's no uh, hard and fast rule uh, you just use whatever works for you so let's first uh, revise the greedy strategy for a bit. Um, so the elements of greedy strategy are shown in the slide. Uh, so we know that a greedy algorithm obtains an optimal solution to a problem by making a sequence of choices. And um, at each point, the algorithm chooses the option which it thinks is the best so it chooses the local optimum at every point uh, but we also know that uh, this does not always prove and uh, provide an optimal solution uh, we have seen multiple examples of uh, mm, failure of a greedy choice in previous lecture um, so that is why it's actually hard to prove the correctness of uh, a greedy algorithm so in today's lecture uh, we'll see a formal proof to prove the correctness of a greedy algorithm you can also uh, prove the correctness of your greedy algorithm by doing ex excessive testing and uh, showing that it works uh, for every instance of the problem but uh, that is not uh, an efficient way to prove the correctness mm, also mm, there's always a chance that you missed some example or uh, an instance of the problem for which your greedy strategy does not work so even one counter example is enough to show that uh, your proposed greedy strategy is not correct so um, that is why we need a formal proof to uh, show that a greedy algorithm is correct or not without uh, doing the excessive testing where there is always a chance of missing an example um, let's first see when a problem can be uh, solved by using a greedy approach so uh, for a problem to have a greedy solution it needs to satisfy two properties the first one is the greedy choice property and the second one is the optimal substructure property now uh, we'll discuss these two properties one by one so uh, according to a greedy choice property um, so a, a greedy choice property is that a locally optimal choice is globally optimal so what does that mean it means that uh, in our greedy choice or in a greedy algorithm uh, every local choice so uh, every local optimal uh, choice that we make that we make is actually a part of some globally optimal solution um, if you don't yet understand this greedy choice property don't worry we'll look at an example uh, find a greedy choice in it and prove that uh, that greedy choice is correct and is made by some optimal solution okay so uh, let's move on to the next property which is the optimal substructure property so according to optimal substructure property an optimal solution to a problem contains optimal solutions to sub problems uh, 
so uh, we actually saw this property uh, when we were studying dynamic programming but uh, we didn't actually uh, discuss it or uh, uh, didn't go into the details of this but now we need this property to prove the correctness of a greedy algorithm so uh, we'll study this in detail now we'll try to understand what optimal substructure actually means uh, but before uh, going to the optimal substructure you need to understand this property that uh, which states that um, so uh, when you solve a problem by a greedy algorithm uh, you are trying to find a globally optimal solution or let's just call it an optimal solution so you're trying to find an optimal solution for the problem um, so this property states that that optimal solution actually contains in it uh, optimal solutions to the sub problems so uh, you can divide your original problem into sub problems and uh, your optimal solution into uh, smaller optimal solutions so uh, this optimal solution is actually made up of the optimal solutions of the smaller sub problems so this is what the optimal sub structure property says so uh, let's first discuss the example of a greedy choice property uh, in last lecture we studied activity selection problem so we'll consider uh, the same ex uh, same algorithm as our example for this greedy choice property in activity sele selection problem we made a greedy choice uh, of choosing the class slash activity with the earliest finish time so we actually um, studied three greedy choices and uh, we said that uh, the greedy choice which uh, schedule the classes by earliest fi finish time is actually correct so we are going with that here so uh, the greedy choice was choosing the class with the earliest finish time and uh, let's stop a uh, greedy choice property right here and we'll prove its correctness uh, after some time in today's lecture let's now discuss the optimal substructure property so uh, just to remind you optimal substructure property says that the optimal solution of a problem contains in it optimal solutions to the sub problems so uh, you can see this graph here this is a weighted undirected graph you are required to find the shortest path between nodes A and D. So as this is a weighted graph, the uh, you can consider these uh, weights to be the costs of these edges. Uh, if it is a road network and you want to go from location A to location D, the weights of the edges can be considered length length of the road. So uh, the shortest path between two location means the path which has the shortest length. So in this case, the shortest path from node node A to node D uh, is the one that goes through the node B. So A to B and then B to D, and the cost is eight. So we found the shortest path between nodes A and D. So there are other paths uh, between node A and D as well, like A to C to D and then A, E, C, D, but the shortest path is A, B and D. So the optimal solution uh, to find the shortest path between nodes A and D is A, B, D and the cost is 8. So, uh, this is the optimal solution A, B, and D. And uh, the problem is going from A to D. So, we can divide this original problem of going from A to D into two sub problems. We first go from A to B, and then we go from B to D. Now, um, the path that we are following, you can observe that. Uh, so these are the sub problems a to b and b to d are the sub problems now uh, 
we want to see that if the optimal solution that is this solution contains the optimal solutions to the sub problems or not if uh, the optimal solution contains in it this optimal solutions to the sub problems then we'll say that this problem uh, follows the optimal substructure property and if it does not then we'll say that this problem does not follow the uh, optimal substructure property so in this solution a b d we are actually uh, solving this sub problem of a to b in an optimal way so the path from a to b is the shortest path between a and b there are many paths between a and b a c d b a e c d b and a b but the shortest path is this direct edge from a to b so this first sub problem is being solved optimally in the final solution and then the second sub problem is b to d again there are many paths between b to d which are b a c d b a e c d or this direct edge between b and d but in our optimal solution this sub problem b to d is solved optimally that is we have used the smallest path between b and d so uh, this problem of shortest path between two nodes actually uh, satisfies this optimal substructure property because this optimal solution contains in it the optimal solutions of the sub problems let's now see um, a problem which does not satisfy the optimal substructure property uh, now you have to find the longest path between nodes a and d so uh, the longest path between node a and d is a e c d and its cost is 15 now the sub problems in this solution are going from a to e then e to c then c to d now um, we want to see if the sub problems are solved optimally or not um, as we saw in the uh, shortest path problem uh, the sub problems were always solved uh, by using the shortest path but uh, and now we'll see if uh, in this longest path problem if the sub problems are solved by longest path or not and as you can see that uh, the sub problem a to e now the longest path between a to e is not this direct edge there are many paths between a to e one is a c e the other one is a b d c e so there are multiple paths and the one that we are using to uh, get this optimal solution is not the longest path between a to e now the second sub problem is e to c again there are many paths between e to c and we are not using the longest path between e to c in our optimal solution and same is the case with c to d so uh, the optimal solution of the longest path between two nodes does not contain in it the optimal solutions of the sub problems hence uh, this problem of the longest path does not satisfy the optimal substructure property so uh, next we'll see the uh, now i hope that you understand uh, the greedy choice property and the uh, optimal substructure property and now we'll see the proof of correctness of activity selection program